Hey everyone, so today I'm taking a look at Hyperjuice's new charger. It's a 100 watt charger, and what makes this thing so special is that it's meant to be one of the most compact and high power chargers that are currently available on the market. Now what makes this possible is that it uses something called gallium nitride. Now this allows companies to make chargers that are more compact, they stay cooler, and they can output um, a higher wattage as well. So on this particular charger, uh, it has four outputs on the side here. It has two USB-C that are marked with 100 watt underneath them, and then two regular USB-A's that are marked as 18 watt. So if you are charging like a laptop for example, you probably want to use the upper ones here, and if you're just charging a phone, then the lower ones here will work for that. Now on the top, there is this white this slot up here. So this is just a uh, white LED light. So if we plug it into the power, um, that will just light up to tell you that there's power. So just comparing this with a MacBook charger. So this MacBook charger here uh, comes with the 13 inch MacBook Pro. It's a 60 watt charger, I believe. So let me just find the information here. So there, there it is. Uh, it's a 60 watt USB-C power adapter there. Now I have the Australian plug because I'm in Australia. But just to get a comparison for size there, this thing here is 60 watt or 61 watt. And then the one on the left is actually 100 watt. And it can actually charge multiple laptops and multiple um, phones at the same time. So there it is, that's a size comparison. So as you can see, you know, it's fairly compact for the power that this thing can deliver. Now, taking a look on the outside, we have the actual prongs here. So it comes with the US one by default. And it's pretty nice, it's compact, it flips up and down like this. Now, if you do buy this, it does come with um, a set of you know, international plugs. Because I'm in Australia, I want to demo the Australian one. Basically, it comes with a UK one, an EU one, and also an Australian one. So something like this. Now, to put this on, you basically fold the prongs up, and then uh, there's a slot here, and you just basically slip it on like, like that. So there it is, it's plugged in. Uh, this is the Australian uh, configuration, I guess. Uh, I guess one thing I don't like is that these prongs are upside down. So if you do plug it in, the Hyperjuice, you know, it'll be, it'll be this way basically the wrong way up. But apart from that, uh, it's pretty cool. Now in their advertising material, it says that this particular charger can charge two 15 inch MacBook Pros at the same time uh, using the USB-C ports up here. So uh, let's get some devices and test this out. All right, so I managed to find two MacBook Pros just lying around the house. And what I've done is I've brought up the system profiler and I've gone to the power section and on the bottom there is AC charger information. Now on both of them right now it says not connected and not charging which is what we want and on the very left I've plugged in the Hyperjuice charger into the power and as you see that white LED is now on. Now into the charger I've plugged in four USB cables so two USB-C ones are on the top and two USB-A ones on the bottom. The USB-A ones are currently not connected to anything they're kind of just hanging on the side here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in a USB-C cable to the MacBook Pro. Let's start with the 15 inch and let's see what this says after I plug it in. So here we go. That's plugged in, it made the charging noise. Now if I refresh this machine here, it says connected yes, and it says wattage is at 100. So that means this 15 inch MacBook Pro is getting the full 100 watts from the Hyperjuice charger, which is pretty good. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna plug in the second USB-C cable and we're gonna plug it into the 13 inch MacBook Pro which is on the right here and we're gonna see what happens. All right, here we go. That's plugged in and made the charging noise. So I actually need to refresh the page. So refresh and scroll to the bottom. It says connected yes and wattage 100, which is interesting. So if I refresh it again, now it says 30. So it took a minute for it to balance itself. So now let's check the MacBook Pro if I refresh this one. It says 65 so if you guys can see that the macbook pro is charging at 65 watts down here and the macbook pro 13 is charging at 30 watts so that goes to about what 95 ish watts so what that is telling us is that the max output of this charger is 100 watts so if you plug in two laptops they're not going to both get 100. What it's going to do is it's going to separate the power so that the more high powered machine gets a little bit more, but the lower powered machine will get less. So in this case, it's doing a 65 to the MacBook Pro 15 and then a 30 to the smaller MacBook. Now, what happens if we plug in another device to like say the USB-A ports down the bottom? So I'm going to grab my phone. So this is my phone. It's a Pixel 4 XL. So I just plugged it in. 
uh, and it is charging. So let's see what happens to the power on these machines when you have three devices plugged in. So let's start with the smaller MacBook. We're gonna refresh this page, go to the bottom here. It still says 30 watts, which is good. Now on the larger machine, on the 15 inch, let's refresh that and do that again. It still says 65. Okay, so that's pretty good. So both machines still getting their share of the power while the phone is actually charging. So there you go. So you can safely charge two laptops plus one phone, not a problem. Now, what happens if I throw an iPad into the mix? So I happen to find an iPad just, just lying around the floor here. Uh, and let's plug in this iPad to the, the last remaining USB-A charger that we got. So that's plugged in and it's charging now. It is 100%, but it should still be drawing some power. So now we have an iPad, a phone, and also two laptops plugged in. So let's start by refreshing this thing here. So the, fifth, the sorry, the 13 inch still says 30 watts. Now the 15 inch still says 65. That's very interesting. So it looks like, I'm not sure if these devices are actually charging now that I look at it. Let's take a look here. It does have the charging symbol for the iPad up here. It says it's charging, it is 100%. So maybe it's not actually drawing any power. The phone is actually uh, charging. It's only on 85% at the moment. So this is actually drawing power. So let's take a look at this again. Still says 65. All right, so it's 65 and 30 on both MacBooks. What happens if we chuck in, chuck in a, a third computer? So let's try that. I'm gonna take off the phone. So let's unplug the phone. And I happen to have a low powered Chromebook here, just a uh, pixel book. So I just had this lying around as well. So let's plug this in. So that's plugged in now. Let's see what happens to these two MacBooks. So if I refresh the 13 inch now, seems fine, not complaining, still says 30 watts here. How about this one? Again, still says 65 watts. Looks like plugging in things to the uh, USB-A ports are not doing anything. So what I'll do is I'll actually turn this machine on. So I'm gonna turn on the Chromebook off to the side here, which you can't see, but I'll show you shortly. Okay, so immediately on my Chromebook, it's saying that a low power charger is connected. Uh, and it says low power charger. So obviously the two USB-A ports down the bottom there can't really power a laptop. Even, even a low powered laptop like this Pixelbook can't quite power it. But now that it's on, let's take a look at what happens to these two MacBooks. So refreshing the MacBook Pro page here. Still says 65 watts down here. This one still says 30 watts. So there you go. It can successfully charge two laptops. Actually, almost almost three laptops here. Uh, this one's not quite charging, so this one probably won't charge if I have it on. But I guess if I, you know, close the lid or let it sleep, it will probably trickle charge. But yeah, if you want to charge, you know, two and a half laptops, you know, this this solution works pretty well. So final thoughts for this Hyperjuice 100 watt charger. I think it's pretty damn good. Uh, it does live up to the hype. Uh, it is compact, it does deliver the 100 watt as promised. Now having used this for about several months now, uh, I have discovered that if you do have several laptops charging, the MacBook Pro does drop from 65 watts uh, down to 45 watts. Now in the demo I showed earlier, uh, I think both laptops were fully charged. So that's why it was showing 65 and 30 watts on the two MacBooks basically constantly. Uh, but if say it was 50%, for example, on the MacBook Pro 15, then you plug in a third laptop or maybe even an iPad, then it will actually draw down the power a bit more. So don't expect to be able to charge three laptops, but two laptops definitely, uh, it'll definitely be a bit slower. But if you need to charge something really quickly, uh, use the two USB-C at the top and make sure nothing else is plugged in. So if you have one device on the USB-C, you can get the full 100 watts. Anything else, and it will start splitting the power uh, amongst the, the different devices on the, on the charging brick. Now, do I think you should buy it? Uh, well, if you travel a lot and you wanna just carry one charging brick with you, I think this is actually pretty good. I like how they give you the travel adapters as well. So it does come with the UK and the EU and the AU, and the US is built in. So if you do have this, basically, this is all you need for your travel charging needs. 
Now, actually, wait a minute. I have a switch here. Will it charge a switch? So for the people not familiar with the switch, uh, basically this is very particular about what kind of power it takes. And if you want it to go into dock mode, basically only the provided Nintendo charger will work. So I'm very surprised if this will actually work. Holy, no way, it works with the switch, holy sh